Okay, so let's talk about what light is. So light is going to be um, this thing that um, we're going to say is a quantized packet. So that means that it's like a discrete unit. That's what that quantized packet is. Um, and we're going to call it a quantum. Um, if you, this is normally where I put in a plug for James Bond movies. So, uh, and the books, actually, I think the books are a lot better than the movies. Um, there was a, the Quantum of Solace movie was loosely based off of a short story in the James Bond series called the Quantum of Solace. Um, didn't ha the Quantum of Solace story didn't really have anything to do with James Bond per se. Like he wasn't the main character in the story. Um, but the quantum there was, uh, in the title, not because of quantum mechanics, but because of like, there was this just like one small discrete unit or small discrete amount of solace that the character in the story had because it was kind of an overall uh, unhappy story um so quantum here is a small unit a small discrete uh, and by discrete I'm not saying like it's polite I'm saying it's its own individual thing so because we're saying that oops Let's go to the bigger portion of the video there. Um, since we're saying energy is in this small discrete packet, um, energy is going to get transferred in these discrete packets. And so if we're traveling, if energy is traveling along like one packet at a time, then it's going to have particulate properties. It's going to have particle like properties so we just described uh what waves were because we said that light had wave properties it had that frequency it had a speed it had a wavelength but now we're also going to say that white light is going to have particle particulate properties um, so we have this with light we have this thing called the wave particle duality so it kind of acts like a wave, it acts like a particle, and the neat thing about light is depending on how you're measuring it and what the experiment is supposed to be measuring. So if a, me if a measurement is supposed to be measuring the particulate properties of light, you're going to see the particulate properties of light. If a, an experiment is supposed to be measuring the wave-like properties of light, you're going to be measuring the wave-like properties. Uh, light is like this ultimate mind reader that depending on what you really want to observe, which kind of properties, that's what light is going to give you. You can't even psych it out where you can say like, I'm going to set up the experiment that's going to look like we're testing the wave properties, but then it's really going to be testing the particle properties. Light's like, cool, you want particle properties, that's what I'm going to exhibit for you. Um, so light's this really cool thing it's going to act like a wave and a particle. It's kind of neat stuff. In your book, which I do recommend you reading the entire of, entirety of the chapter of uh, the, um, I think we're in chapter eight now, I do recommend that you read the whole thing. So where does this wave and particle stuff come into play uh well old albie einstein um he's going to be this guy who's going to suggest that electromagnetic radiation is quantized um and he's going to call these particles photons so how do we measure the energy of said photons of light um this would be um E equals H nu, the equation that we're going to use. So E is going to be the energy for a single photon of light. So like one individual packet, right? So H is Planck's constant. Um, v or nu, it's really nu, is going to be our frequency. So this is where knowing the frequency of our radiation is going to be important because if we can figure out the frequency or if we have the information to figure out the frequency we can figure out how much energy that photon actually has 
So let's work through an example. So if we take that information we had from the um, red sun of Krypton and we had its frequency, um, how much energy does a photon of red light have? So this question saying, like, what's the energy difference between red and yellow light? Which one's more energetic? Well, before you can figure out what the difference in energies would be, you need to know how much energy a single photon of red light has to begin with. So let's work that example. So if we're starting here, we've got E equals H nu. Now for E, this is going to be the energy of our photon of red light. H is going to be Planck's constant. And Planck, this, the thing about this constant is it's a numeric value that just works. Um, that's the nice thing about constants. They're just really kinds of things that uh, help us make sure that the equations we're using accurately describe uh, real world phenomena. So we'll see this number and you might think like that number makes very little sense. And I'm, I'll say to you, cool, but it does work. So we're going to use it. And so H is going to be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. That's a fun unit right there, joules times seconds. It's got that unit uh, because if we set it up properly, now if we multiply by our frequency, frequency is going to be measured in per second. Well, the seconds will cancel between our Planck's constant and between the uh, hertz. So we'll be left with just joules at the end of this uh, calculation. So because I've got a terrible memory. I don't exactly remember what that numeric value was. We said it was 6 point, or I'm sorry, 4.6 times 10 to the 14th. So 4.6 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Another way of writing out hertz would be one over second or per second. I'm gonna write it out as one over second this time. Um, just to highlight the fact that now we have second in the denominator right here, and we have seconds in the numerator. Those will cancel. So we're going to be left with a unit of just joules. So we type it into our calculator. We make sure that we type it in right, the 6.626. Uh, for me, e to the negative 34th times 4.6 e to the 14th and we get out an energy of a single photon can't stress that enough a single photon of red light being three point uh if we did the two sig figs thing again it'd be 3.0 times 10 to the negative 19th joules The um, 6.6 times 10 to the negative 34th is Planck's constant. And it's always going to be that, like in that um, joules times second, right? Yeah, this is always going to be Planck's constant. The 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times second. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think if in your class that you ever need to use one of the uh, other derivatives for... Uh, Planck's constant. I don't think you do. The What I was thinking about with that was um, in some classes, uh, physical chemistry too, when you start doing the quantum mechanics stuff there, um, you might use not the joules uh, time second, but you might use can't remember what that unit's called now, but you would you could derive joules into a different unit, um, and so it would change the numeric value of the constant. 
But if you converted it back to being joules times second, you'd still end up with the 6.626. Yeah. So for this question that's above us, now that we've got our energy of our red photon of light, we could use the same methodology to figure out the energy of our yellow photon of light. And we could just take the difference between the two of those and we could figure out which one's gonna be more energetic. Now, a little trick, if we go back to uh, one of the slides at the very beginning here, right here, um, this scaling, I'm gonna go, this scaling tells us which side is more energetic and which side is less energetic. So um, we've got high frequency radiation, gamma rays, and we've got low frequency radiation, something like radio waves. Stuff that's over to the left, closer to gamma radiation is gonna be higher energy. And that should make sense because we're gonna take just that Planck's constant times the frequency. We're gonna, so for gamma rays, it's gonna be 10 to the 20th times that 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. Over here with radio, it's gonna be 10 to the eighth times the 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. Um, so we can really just, without doing the math, as long as we can say it goes gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave radio, you're always going to be able to say, yeah, gamma rays are way more energetic than radio waves, just by the placement on the electromagnetic spectrum. Then when you look at visible light, um, it's the same thing. Violet is more energetic than red light. So without doing any kind of numeric value for the question that we had on the screen, um, we can say, hey, yellow light is right here kind of in the middle and red is on the right to the right of that so our yellow light um, because it's going to have a higher frequency than our red light yellow will be more energetic if we get a numeric value that represents something opposite of that we probably did math wrong so this is where having that electromagnetic spectrum down is going to really help you out um, with doing some of those problems going forward does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay. It's just kind of a nice little self-check. <laughs>